I once saw a mob go after Connor C. Dog VA on Twitter because he had the audacity to make a tweet about food. This was months ago. I forget exactly what was said. But I do remember people getting all upset with him, saying that he was privileged and stuff like that. I didn't cover the situation. It was some shenanigans. But this particular situation is much, much worse than that one. So Connor has issued a statement, which we're going to read. But first, I just want to give you my perspective on this. Because a couple days ago, I saw him make this tweet that said, Wow, is Jeff Bezos funding this season of Demon Slayer? What is their animation budget? So it's an obvious joke. And the fact that I even need to point that out is a testament to how ridiculous this the situation is. Because some people took that joke way too seriously. There was some guy on Twitter, allegedly an animator, and he quote retweeted Connor's tweet and said, Big anime YouTuber with large platform makes misleading tweet about anime production, case number 833. There were a surprising amount of people actually agreeing with the take, including a somewhat well-known account that talks about manga news and gives his opinion on manga. And the same person I've seen previously trying to smear YouTubers for complete nonsensical reasons. So I really wasn't surprised seeing the same person going after Connor over a literal joke that he made. Those are just some examples of what I saw, but there were a lot of people on both sides. Some people like upset with Connor for that tweet, and others saying that the people upset are taking it way too seriously, and it's just a joke. And I thought that was the end of it. That was a couple days ago. I hadn't seen anything about this up until today when I got people tagging me to the tweet by Connor, where he says, this has gone way too far and posts a link to a twit longer, which if you're not aware of is something people use to make a, a longer statement because Twitter really limits the amount of text you can put in a tweet. So we'll take a look at this twit longer now. Oh, and before we do, I would also like to add this, like between this situation and the recent Mori situation that happened as well, I almost feel like this is some sort of alternate reality. Like th this can't be reality, right? People can't actually be like this. Unfortunately, this is reality. At least I'm pretty sure it is. Anyways, let's get into the statement. Here we go. Connor says, this has gone way too far. First off, I want to say I unequivocally condemn any harassment from anyone online. There's absolutely no place for anyone to attack anyone over anything on Twitter. It's really disappointing to see anyone, especially from my audience, attack anyone. And if you think you are in any way helping me, you're not. You do not belong in my audience and you are not welcome. Stop. Please do not engage with anyone from the Twit longer. Leave it. The situation should have never gotten to what it is, and it's absurd that I'm having to address anything over the following tweet. Wow, is Jeff Bezos funding this season of Demon Slayer? What is their animation budget? Now, from any perspective, this is a joke. I had recently watched episode 8 of Demon Slayer. It was amazing. The animation had me hyped, so I tweeted out that. Again, it's obviously a joke and no way to interpret it otherwise. Does that make it funny? Accurate? Nope. People from the animation community certainly didn't find it funny and were frustrated that I furthered the joke of budget equals good animation. To my knowledge, as someone who doesn't follow anyone within any animation circles outside of my boys, I genuinely had no idea this would rile them up so much. Now, quick side note. Since this whole twit longer thing has been made, I've seen animators coming to Connor and saying that this wasn't a big deal and the joke was fine. Just FYI. So there are people on that side as well. Anyways, continuing, Connor says... An animator quote retweeted my tweet in a now deleted tweet that says big anti-tuber with large platform makes misleading tweet about anime production case number 833. A few people replied with your standard, it's a joke, but generally nothing out of the ordinary for Twitter discourse. I didn't mind this tweet. Anyone can tweet what they want regarding me. I am open to being educated on topics I am ignorant on, and I'm happy to be better informed. The animator followed up by deactivating their account, which led to this wave of speculation and dogpiling on myself like I haven't had in a while. People in this community who are professionals and some aspiring professionals immediately saw this as an opportunity to harass and dogpile on me and my audience, calling what I did an abuse of power and that I should be held accountable. Uh, I'm laughing a little bit here, man. This is just so unbelievable to me. Side note again, obviously. The fact that he makes a joke and people are this upset saying he's abusing his power and stuff like that. Oh my gosh. Continuing. Connor says, their reason I was spreading disinformation for a joke tweet that in no way would be read seriously. Ironically, this is where disinformation came into play and people have actively started spreading lies about me. And for some reasons, my friends, Joey and Garnt, I will not name who as they are much smaller accounts than me. And I, although I don't want them to receive any negative attention that they might not be able to handle, but I deserve the right to defend myself as this has gone so far that I can't ignore it anymore with people just flat out making stuff up. 
A majority of these accounts clearly saw this as an opportunity to dogpile and gain brownie points in their inner circles while condemning me. Now I'm going to make another side note here, just chiming in my opinion before we continue, because we're only about halfway done. But I know what this is like. I know what it's like to have people spreading just complete misinformation and then like trying to circle a mob after you over literal lies, over things that you have not done. And most of the time, I don't call this stuff out because on one hand, it's just the nature of things, especially when you're in this space that's like the public space, so to speak. People are going to make stuff up. If you try to like respond to all of it, if you even try to read all of it, you might just burn yourself out or go insane. Now, some of these people just want attention and they make stuff up for like the reasons Connor said they want brownie points or whatever, but then others literally want to ruin you. They want to destroy your career, which we're going to get into more, by the way, in this situation. Some people did contact Connor's employer trying to get him fired. Spoiler alert. But you got, you got a combination. You got some people that want brownie points. Some people literally want to ruin your career. And some people want both. Some people want the brownie points and they want to ruin your career. But the point I'm getting at here is that in my opinion, at least, if someone makes a false accusation about you in the public space, literally trying to ruin your career, you absolutely have all the rights in the world to respond to them directly. You don't need to leave them anonymous. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's dangerous on your part to leave them anonymous because if you just respond to some accusation without being specific to who said it, people might assume the wrong thing. So sometimes it is a good idea to respond to something and be like, yeah, I'm responding directly to this person. This is the guy that said it. Here's why it's a lie. And on a side note, even a smaller account, so to speak, can have an accusation tweet go absolutely viral about somebody. I mean, I've seen many times where someone's account has 100 followers or like less than a thousand followers and they accuse somebody of something and that particular tweet gets like tens of thousands of likes. So just because someone has a small account doesn't mean that their accusation might not carry a lot of weight. And if it's a false accusation, well, you can see how that might be an issue. Okay, continuing back to Connor, he says, this was just day one. Day two, AKA today started and I woke up to a strange tweet, now deleted. This animator claimed in DMs they had received harsh messages and then were doxxed and swatted. Obviously, if true, it is horrific, disgusting, and that person should be arrested for vile behavior. I will also do my best to help hold the person responsible accountable and, of course, offer my help to the animator affected in any way possible. This led to further backlash against myself. Please keep in mind, during this whole time, I was either working, streaming, or sleeping. All I had done was a tweet praising the Demon Slayer animation. This led to comments from this community to get even more vile against me, some even suggesting that if Trash Taste was killed, the anime community would be better for it, as well as emailing my employer trying to get them to fire me, again, over this Demon Slayer tweet. So why? Why are these people accusing me of something that I so blatantly didn't do is comical. They denounced dogpiling, but dogpile on me for a Demon Slayer tweet. Okay, side note again, because man... I see that sort of thing happen all the time on Twitter. Someone will falsely accuse somebody of something. That person then responds to the false accusation. And then guess what? The person who did this to begin with, the person smearing them, the person in the wrong, will play victim and claim that they are being harassed. Back to Connor, he says, Well, a lot of the members from this community have, for some reason, a long-running grudge against myself and my Trash Taste co-host. It's obvious by how quickly the conversation went about accusing my viewers and the Trash Taste viewers for being toxic when it's obvious by looking at the discourse surrounding all of this that there are near zero people actually arguing in favor of me. This community demanded I apologize for something that might not even be tied to me. The animator did not even confirm or provide receipts who it was in the DMs harassing and targeting them, yet the community jumped at the chance to blame me. If you are on Twitter and pick fights and get one, don't be surprised. This has nothing to do with me. Had I retweeted support against you? Had I liked any of these posts defending me? Had I sent my viewers their way? Nope, I stayed out of it. I also have a feeling that the animator will deactivate again after this post. I'm sorry, but I do have the right to defend myself and I beg them not to interact with you. I want nothing but the best for you. No one deserves mental anguish over a Demon Slayer tweet. Ultimately, I feel like a part of this community will take any opportunity to try and ruin my name and career, and I feel sad and disappointed. I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I know I can get things wrong. I know I'm not the most eloquent, but I am never hostile towards anyone, and I'm always willing to learn and improve myself. That being said, I don't hate anyone involved and I don't hold anything against anyone who was involved in this drama. So stop. This stupid drama has gone far enough. Stop. Now let's go back to watching Demon Slayer. I just want this community to be fun and inclusive as it can be. So let's try to support each other for once. So I think Connor has handled this pretty well. And the animator has also issued an apology, which I will show you in a moment. But I would just like to say something here before we continue on. And... That's that I'm actually not all that familiar with Connor's work and or Trash Taste's work. So don't think I'm just blindly white knighting for them here. 
I do think Connor is in the right because that seems to be the reasonable person's perspective, in my opinion, in this situation. And it's nothing against Connor or Trash Taste. I just don't get a chance to watch too many YouTube videos, especially long form content like Trash Taste podcast and stuff, because I'm busy making my own videos every day. Anyways, here's the animator's apology tweet it says, and also I apologize for drama. I was in a pretty bad mood that day, so my response to the budget tweet was not very respectful. I still stand by the fact that it's incorrect, and if it's being told as a joke, it's a pretty nonsensical joke to make, but nonetheless, sorry. And uh, <laughs> I think the point of the joke was that it was exaggerated, it was sarcasm. Like obviously, animators are not being paid Jeff Bezos level of money, so it seems really silly for people to get all heated about this joke that Connor made. I just personally interpreted Connor's joke as him complimenting the anime, complimenting the animators, the animation, because he's really enjoying the show. He's impressed. But yeah, that's really the situation. Uh, there's a little bit more to it here and there. Like the animator said a bit more stuff, but I don't want to go through all those tweets. So I'm just going to leave it there. That's the gist of it. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this segment. And man, after that Mori stuff and now this... Uh, kind of nervous to see what tomorrow will bring, but I'll catch you in the comments and also tomorrow for the next segment.